Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Badger and in today's video I have my biggest project that I've ever worked on. This is round 100 on every Infinite Warfare Zombies map. Hopping straight into our first map. This is going to be zombies in space land and the setup for this and the actual strat itself is actually very, very simple. Uh, really all it is, is you need an upgraded M1 Grand, which I'm using director's cut mainly. I don't know if I'll put this in yet, but once I get to challenge shuffle, uh, I'm going to show why I decided to do director's cut. I have had so many bullshit downs that have ended my game. So I basically gave up trying to do this with just five perks. That's that's just a heads up. With Even with Director's Cut, some of these maps are still kind of difficult to get done. Mainly Shaolin. This setup is super simple. You don't need to really keep any doors closed. Uh, you just need the wind element from doing the UFOs. You need an upgraded M1 Grand. And then really whatever fast mobility gun you want. You can use cryo grenades too. Like it's not overly the hardest setup in the world. Uh, I kind of did my own thing with this game though. I didn't really overly go off of like a speed run strat or like, you know, I just, I kind of was just going along with the game. I wasn't really overly, like I was doing fast croc because I get very bored, which is why this project has been kind of a struggle, especially with IW, especially with two of the maps. But I kind of just did my own thing for the early rounds. The later rounds I did just fast croc because it's fast but at round six here i end up turning the power on and i get a clown round so i decide to just stay in spawn for this next round uh but once i grab the max ammo and the round's over i decide to head throughout the map i go grab neil's head which if you didn't know neil you do some challenges for him you can get tickets and then once you upgrade him you can actually get david hasselhoff to spawn into the map and kill zombies with you really cool easter egg so there i attach his head but here on round eight, after I ended the round, I'm going to go through the Kepler system and I'm going to go turn on one of the power switches, which is just up the stairs. And once I do that, I'm going to go ahead and hop into the teleporter, which teleports you back to spawn. But this is how you turn on Pack-a-Punch. You need to use four of these. And the other one is in the Polar Peaks. And the other one, I don't actually remember the name of the area. But here I'm taking the back way into Polar Peaks. Uh, I'm not overly sure why. I think I actually did keep the door from Polar Peaks into the main area closed this game. I could be wrong on that, but I don't overly remember. But I'm just going to head up these stairs here and I'm going to turn on the power switch. And then I'm going to run back down and I'm going to turn on the teleporter and then teleport back to spawn. Basically just a rinse and repeat of this in three different or four different areas. So I end round nine, I go ahead and activate the portal and I'll teleport back to spawn. But here I'm actually going the back way again. I don't, I really like back ways in this game apparently. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm going the back way into the, uh, isn't, I mean, it's not the afterlife arcade, just the arcade. But here I'm going to activate another generator and then I'm, I think I finish out the round here or no, I'm actually just going to teleport straight away. Uh, usually the brute, oh yeah, so there's the brute, he's the, basically the boss of this map. He's not overly the toughest thing to kill if you have a pack-a-punched gun, but he sometimes can be pretty annoying, especially in the early rounds. But here, are, I actually remember why now <laughs> that I'm going these, uh, back ways. It's actually because I kept the door right there, I don't know if, the door basically from this area into spawn. I kept that door closed so I could actually camp this area. I don't know if it overly made the spawns any faster or if I'm just kind of losing in my mind. But here the brute spawns in front of me so I use my HVR. I take off his head, turn on the generator, lay a couple shots into him, and then I run away. And then turn around. And I mean he's decently easy to kill. But that, that also is because I am using director's cut. I have double tap so it's kind of easy to take him out. 
there I win some tickets by doing a kneel challenge. But then I kind of just chill. I'm waiting to end the round here. But once I do end the round, I'm going to go ahead and activate the portal. Once this portal opens, teleport to spawn. You kind of get the idea. But then I'm going to turn around and actually go into the Pack-A-Punch room. I'm going to hit the UFOs and I'm going to pat my M1 Garand and my Kendalls. But I actually end up double papping my Kendalls here because if you double pap them, you actually get them dual wield and they're very, very, very good on the low rounds. But here my time is up, so I get teleported out of the Pack-A-Punch room. And then I'm just basically going to do the rest of Neil's challenges to try to get as many tickets as I can for the Cryo Freeze Grenades. And as you can see, here, the M1 Garand, if you're just hip firing from range, it doesn't actually do a lot. Basically, if I had to kill a zombie from a range with an M1 Garand, I would either just move closer to it or I would have to aim down sights. Because if you're hip firing with the MX Garand from a MX Garand, M1 Garand, it actually doesn't do overly a ton of damage once you get the arcane core which is what i'm saving up my tickets for and you get the wind attachment it is phenomenal but here uh i get my final challenge complete which is kill five zombies while jumping which gives me my last 85 tickets and then what that does is allow me to buy an arcane core which is 300 it allows you to get the element attachments from the ufos and what these elements do is they add damage to your gun while also adding an effect. There I open the door. I, I don't know why. I don't know why I just didn't open up the door for the rest of the game. But uh, when you have the wind one, what it does is it stuns zombies. So when you're running through the croc's mouth, it actually just stuns them there and the croc smashes down on them. And that guarantees you the whole horde. Now, speaking of the arcane core, I'm actually up in polar peaks because to get the wind UFO like core... You need to get a certain amount of trap kills. I'm still not sure how many trap kills you need. But once you get this certain amount of trap kills, the UFO will actually change paths. And then once that UFO is done, you, it's like path change. You can actually go ahead and start killing zombies with the gun that you put the arcane core on. Now here, I'm just finishing up the arcane core. Uh, basically, it has to be within a certain range. With it in the UFO, see, I got it and it drops. I take the part, and then once it's upgraded, I'm basically just gonna one shot zombies until like round 30. It's ridiculous because I'm playing on director's cut. I also got a weapon upgrade, which just gave me a double papped M1 for free. But going into our low round strat, this is what I thought was gonna work a little bit better than what I, what I was doing. But basically, I came up here to where the arcade entrance is, and I left that door closed. And I just sat up here with the M1 and then basically just killed. This strat works, but it's not overly that fast. And honestly, it's kind of boring just sitting here shooting. So instead, what I did is I kind of did a mixture of the strats. I would go up there and camp until the rocket trap was ready. When the rocket trap was ready, I'd hit it and then I'd sit right in this corner. And basically, it's weird with how the zombies work because if they have a spawn point right in front of me to my left you can see it right there but what they do is they don't go for me they go for the trap so basically i can just sit here afk because i'm also standing on top of a zombie spawn and in this game if you're standing on top of a zombie spawn it actually just cancels that spawn out and they have to spawn somewhere else this is why this trap is so good for the early rounds is because it's also pretty condensed on where they all spawn so that this strat is actually pretty fast for the low rounds and here I actually get a clown round and the clown rounds honestly take forever. Like it is stupid with how long they take, but the clown rounds are super easy. Like, I don't know why I'm using, I don't even remember what gun I have here. I think it's the HVR, uh, but I would just use your M1 because the M1 is super easy to use. It literally just one taps them, but they're going to spawn either next to the entrance to the basement up by the arcade door entrance or they're going to spawn to the left base uh, it's kind of by the meal munchies machine and those are really the only three spawn points so these rounds i mean they're just they're a max ammo round nothing overly special but i just ran this rocket like i ran the rocket trap till about i think it was i think i stopped doing it around 45 i could be wrong but I was kind of just running around in this area using cryo grenades, the trap, and just shooting zombies. I was just kind of doing a mixture of that. 
But if I did get an insta kill, I would come to the same spot where the rock I would stand for the rocket trap and I would basically just look at the two spawns and I would shoot. Nothing overly special. But I actually lied. Uh it turns out I went to the fast crack way earlier than I thought. But I don't think I stayed there. I think I actually ended up switching it. But basically, as you can see, I'm just running around the middle of the map and then I go over here to the trap when it's ready and I hit the trap and then I stand there. But that trap actually ended up getting me through the round. So on round 42 is when I made my way over to fast crock. Uh, I looked through the gameplay later. I don't actually stay here. But if you do want to run it in the early rounds is basically what it looks like. Start around, round up all the zombies. And then what you do is you hesitate throughout the crock, chomps down. Boom, bada, bing, and you basically run straight through again when the after the croc chomps down. And if you get pinned like this, just run up these stairs, drop down, and then you're going to have to wait for the zombies to group up again if you want to actually get them all with the croc trap. I did mine way too early, and I didn't get all of them. But please pay attention, because if you have your volume on low or you're listening to music, you can't hear when the croc chomps, and you will go down super easily. But yeah, well, basically, uh, this is probably the best gameplay I have of it. Uh, you can get pinned so fast with how the collision in this game works. But uh, let's take another look at that. Basically, I'm not paying attention overly. I'm not really overly caring. But the clown's there. That zombie comes from around the corner. I get pinned. Clown explodes. I start shooting, hit a zombie, and stun him with the wind. I mess up my slide. And then I do the better movement, which is B hopping. B hopping is the best movement in this game. But yeah, after that whole spiel, that's why I think I actually ended up doing fast croc for a little bit. But basically, it's, I mean, I already explained it. It's super easy to do. You just kind of have to be careful with it. And yeah, I mean, that's probably the best example I have of it, especially low rounds. But uh, yeah, that's really all there is to it. This is what I did all the way up until... Here, I almost go down again. <laughs> I don't even remember that. That kind of caught me off guard. As I'm, and then I get... <laughs> Holy shit. But yeah, as I as before I cut myself off, this is the strat I ran all the way from basically... Like, I think I ended up going back to doing the shooting trap and then uh, tri cryo freeze. I could not think of the word there. But I did that, and then I think I did that... Till about 56 it looked like. There I almost go down. I don't know how I'm alive. But I switched out my Kendall's for the Oni. And I switched out my HVR for the Erad. You don't need really either of those. But the Onis were nice. For, especially for when clowns would get in my way. And I had my like uh, I had my more mobility focused weapon out. But yeah. This is the strat I ran all the way from about 56 to 99. 56 to 100 I mean. But yeah. This was actually probably the second most enjoyable one I've done on Infinite Warfare. I'm going to be kind of ranking these as I go. But in terms of enjoyment, this was definitely up there. Uh, this is I'd say this is number two. But here I cryo freeze with one of the zombies and then I have to wait for the police guy to come through. But here he chomps down, get the XP, round 100 was hit. And that was Zombies in Spaceland. Now we can move on to my favorite map on this game, Raven the Redwoods. Raven in the Redwoods, what a map. Uh, this was by far the most enjoyable high round that I have done on Infinite Warfare. Uh, there's just always, I mean, you're always moving, you're always doing something. You don't have to do any like ridiculous, like training or like anything really insane. And what I mean by like ridiculous training, I mean like tedious. I mean, Spaceland was fun, but running around a crocodile for six and a half hours gets boring pretty, pretty quick. Uh, but with Rave, I mean, I just, I don't know what it is. There's just something about Rave. And here we are. I'm going to kill the last two zombies here on round two. Now, the cool thing about Rave is you have these challenges that you can do. I think they're on every map. I know they're on Spaceland and Rave. I'm not sure about any map. 
or every other map, but what you can do is actually activate these challenges. I think in space lane, you could actually just buy them with tickets, but in this map, you can activate a challenge. Mine is melee kill 15 zombies. Once I melee kill these 15 zombies, which is in the entirety of round three and two on round four, I am able to purchase the rewind grenade. And now what this does is when used, it'll teleport you back to a certain point. I'm not exactly sure how it works, but once it teleports you back, uh, you actually get your ammo refilled. And what this does is allows you to have basically a max ammo at will when you need it. Now the catch, you can only use it every other round. So if I use it on round eight, I have to wait around and then it'll be ready on round 10 for me to pick up. But that's just an overview of how that works. It's basically having a max ammo in your pocket. Now what I do, I'm just finishing off the rest of my challenge here. I'm going to kill two zombies. And the cool thing about rave is it has rave mode. What you need for rave mode is a pouch that the zombies drop when you kill them. And when you're in this mode, uh, past round 10, you get this like slasher dude that's like, impossible to kill i'm pretty sure you actually can't kill him but here since i'm under round 10 i activate it and i activate scope dollars so not only is rave mode uh the zombies are weaker you also get double points when in rave mode so i have scope dollars active which gives me an extra 300 points per headshot plus the double points so i'm getting 500 points per zombie kill it is stupidly broken and around four, I'm going to open up this door and then I head down into this area. But once in here, I was really hoping for a monkey round, but I didn't get a monkey round. So now I just basically got to chill here and finish out this round before I can go down and turn on power. But here I'm turning on power. And then once I turn on power, I can actually access the main cabin again because that door will open. And I'm actually going to head upstairs and I'm going to grab the boat part, which allows me to travel to the Pack-a-Punch Island. It's right in here. But then since I'm lazy, I don't want to walk around the entire map. I'm going to take the zip line over. Now this, the zip lines are actually probably one of my favorite features about Rafe. They can get you anywhere on the map. And here I actually had to head back to the cabin because I forgot that Pack-a-Punch piece originally when I ran past it. But here I ended that round and round seven is actually the monkey round which I'm going to spend down here at the rave area. I'm going to go ahead and buy the type two butcher open down into the rave area. Now there's only one door that I keep closed and it's right there. Uh, mainly it's next to the Eagle statue because that will slow down the strategy a ton, but the butcher is so ridiculously good. I grab the guitar for the pack a punch boat and then I head up this way. This is just another, I look for the statue that's down here. It's there. I grab it. This is probably the most annoying statue to grab because this wall takes goddamn forever to climb. Here, I'm just going to spend uh, killing a couple zombies. I'll drop down, look for the part, and then I make my way through the camping area, and then I make my way down to the lake. Once I'm down by the boats, I check for the other statue location. I open up into the pack-a-punch boat. I look for the other statue location that's sitting on the table. It's there, so I grab it. And then I head back to the boat. Now, once I arrive at the island, I'm going to spend this round. Uh, I'm going to end the round here. Actually, I don't think I end the round because one of the zombies doesn't spawn here. But the reason why you want to make your way to the Pack-A-Punch Island, uh, even though you don't pack a punch in this map, is because you need the glizzies. You heard me right. There are fucking glizzies on a zombies map. This is why Rave is the best map. You have a fucking LSD trip and you got some glizzies. But here I go over, I pick up the glizzies and I take the zip line over. I grab the pack a punch reel for no reason. And then I'm going to check to see if the zombie's there. He's not there. So I just zip line back to the island. All right. And now we enter rave mode. Rave mode is basically one giant LSD trip. And what do you do in this LSD trip? You might be asking. You throw hot dogs at fucking deer heads. You heard me right. There's also some side Easter eggs, which actually is used in the high round strat where you have to play smashy frog. So here I'm throwing the glizzy at the deer head and it drops a symbol. Pick it up. These doors this is actually really cool. These doors are only available in rave mode and they're really helpful for getting around the map. But here I drop down. I head into the main cabin and then there is another deer head which you have to hit. Pick up the symbol. And then the final deer head is located inside of your spawn. Throw the glizzy at that. Pick up the symbol and then you're going to break the lock on the crossbows. Here I trade out my M1 Garand once I'm out of rave mode and pick up the Vlad. 
No, not this Vlad, the better Vlad. Once you have the Vlad, you need to make your way down to the rave area. This is where we are going to need to damage the zombies just a little bit until they explode. And then once you have your statue filled, you need to find wherever that animal statue, its actual statue in the map corresponds. So for the wind bow, I actually have to find the deer, which is right here. And then basically all you do is you spam your bow at the ground to kill zombies and it fills the animal up. But now since I filled it up, I can pick it up and I get the wind bow. And basically what you have to do with this is you have to do this for every single statue. I don't because I don't use the Ben Franklin because that bow is goddamn awful. And here I am down at the rave again. I'm putting the rest of the animal statues in because I actually only did the one. But this is actually kind of an annoying part because you just have to damage the zombies so little. But like, especially with double tap, you're going to kill them pretty quick. So it's kind of hard to get all of the zombies weak enough to where they explode. But I eventually do get it and I pick up my final statue here. And now it's just a matter of finishing off the round and then going and actually filling up these statues, which isn't too bad. But the first statue here is for the acid rain. It's the owl statue. It's right here. Again, just spam the bow at the ground and you'll fill it. But here we go. I actually upgraded it. And what's the cool thing about these bows is you can hold multiple of them. If you have meal munchies, you can have all three of your weapon slots be bows. And that's what this strategy is. You use the trap bow, the acid rain, and the wind bow. And honestly, I'm very surprised they didn't name at least one of the bows Dumbo. But here we go. Our final one is down at the camp's fire. They place the item there. It's actually an eagle for the trap bow. And once again, I just have to shoot the ground, kill enough zombies, and then pick it up. And here, I pick it up. It's dual wield. It's fucking cool. But let's get right into the strategy. So the first thing I do before I actually go into the strategy is I grab a rewind grenade and trade out the glizzies. They unfortunately gotta go. But then I run up the stairs and I out to the balcony and I actually can take a zip line down to the rave area dude I told you the zip lines are the best thing in this map but once you're down here there isn't honestly for these low rounds there's not really much of a strategy because I mean it, I mean it's a low round I'd say until about round like 30 you're basically just doing the same thing I'm doing here you're literally going in a straight line you shoot towards the top you shoot towards the trailer and then you run back to the quickies and then you just rinse and repeat. Basically, if you have a lot of zombies on one side, you're going to shoot to wherever the major side of the horde is. And then if there's not really any zombies, just run back. Now, the only tricky thing with this strategy is just conserving your wind bow and your acid rain ammo enough to where you can actually use them effectively. But these like low rounds, even up in past 30, you can be pretty, I mean, careless with how you shoot them. Because you're going to be killing a good amount of zombies if you're doing the strategy right. Plus the bows drop the backpack so you can pick up ammo clips. They'll give you drops too. That's also another part that just happened. I got stuck on a spawn. There's a couple different spots down here that you can actually die to pretty easily. And like I said, you're going to shoot to where more zombies are. So right there, I shot towards the bigger part of the horde. And that's the thing I've kind of noticed with IW maps. There's not a lot of variation in high rounds. Like there's not really like different strats you can overly do and still get the same result like with rave you can do what well, fish trap or you could do bows or you could do bow and fish trap i mean that's like three strategies versus like bo3 you could do about 18 different strategies on a single map it's just it's just an interesting observation but back to the actual game if you do your you get you, you, if you do use your rewind grenade, this is the route you're going to run. You're going to go up through the tunnel into cave. You're going to go down to the cave by the uh, HVR wall by. You're going to go down through power. You're going to go up these stairs to the left, and you're going to go out the door uh, to the rewind grenade that we originally went out to. What I like to do is before I grab the rewind grenade, I shoot a trap bow at the door that way it kills any zombies that zombie was stuck in a wall i have no idea what's going on there but then i run back up the stairs onto the balcony and i zip line down to the rave area and that's how you get a rewind grenade now here i'm just showing off again i'm still doing the same strategy even on round 39 going on to 40 here i don't think there's as many zombies up top that i can shoot so i shoot towards the back end of the rave area and then i shoot up top because more zombies are spawned in then I shoot towards the trailer and it's just a rinse and repeat. If you are being two killers with your wooden bow ammo, you're going to have to start using your acid rain. Basically, you're going to save your trap bow for the later rounds and that's why you want your trap bow. 
But here, I just shot my last wind bow ammo, so now it's time to use the acid rain. I do it right here for the first time. I messed up the actual shot, but realistically, you want to go right to where I just shot it. You're going to shoot it here. You're going to stand in it for a couple seconds. Once it dissipates, you're going to run to this side of the tree, and you're going to shoot it there. This actually kills the zombies coming on top of the, of the plank up top, and it's also going to kill the spawns. Then, basically, this is a rinse and repeat once again on the low rounds. On the higher rounds, you're going to have to be a little bit more conservative. Now here, I'm on round 98. I went flawless this game, but I also didn't overly record that much of it. Uh, there just wasn't overly much to record because it was basically the same thing for four hours. or More like five. But I'm going to shoot my windbow. And sometimes this doesn't actually fully kill. Like that zombie literally just tanks it. So you do have to be wary of that. But then there, I go back and I shoot it towards the trailer. And now here I use my acid rain and this ends up getting me through most of the round. Uh, I did some record some other footage of me past 100 because I didn't know how much I overly recorded. So I did record how to actually go for head game runs, which is what I'm doing right now. Basically follow this path that I take. Make sure you have at least four shots in your trap bow to do this. But here basically uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to shoot one trap bow at this entrance. And I'm going to do one trap bow at the spawn next to the stairs. So the entrance and then stairs. And then you go, and you need to hit heads on this. So aim just a little bit in front of the guy's head and you'll hit it every time. So I hit it there. You see my bow ammo goes to fully maxed out. And I did this on a gorilla round because the gorilla round was round 99. Can't really do much about that. But yeah, that's basically all there is to this strat. I can't really overly think of a ton more that I need to explain. But here we go. Here's the proof. I hit round 100. So we're going to hop over to the most frustrating map I have ever played in my life. And that is Shaolin Shuffle. Shaolin Shuffle. Fuck this map. I have had so many countless downs and just stupid games game over because of either bugs or just the ninja zombies. The ninja zombies alone turned me off of doing this challenge. I would have had this project done months ago if it wasn't for Shaolin. Shaolin has single-handedly taken me a month to do. And I've had countless attempts on just with like normal. And I've had two in director's cut. And I, I said, fuck it, I need a break. I took my break and we're back. But if you want to see some of my bugs and downs that I have had, here is two of them that pissed me off the most. Holy fuck. What is that? I wasn't even red script. What is that down? No, uh, move. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I'm st What the fuck? So as you can see, I have not had a good experience with this map. Also, ignore the Pikachu dancing. That's just something I have on my streams. It also was in my attack game because I was streaming that. Uh, just something stupid I do. I don't know. But to do the high round setup on this map and actually to do the high round, you need to do the Easter egg. You heard me right, you need to do the Easter egg. Because you need to do the entirety of the Easter egg up until the boss fight. You do not have to do the boss fight. But in order for the strategy to work, you need the Rat King's heart. And what the Rat King's heart does is allows you to kill zombies in any round by using it. Basically, uh, it's in regenerating too. I think it's like every 30 seconds it regenerates. But yeah, it's very, very good, very OP. And the reason why we use this is because the sword, if you use the area effect of the sword on the balcony, which is where you camp till 70, anywhere after 70, it'll crash your game. Uh, I'll show a screenshot on screen, but this is what happens when you use it past 70. And it's only past 70 on the balcony. You can still use the sword as long as you're not on the balcony or at a ledge where the area effect happens. And thank you to Scrine for letting me know that. And also, I am not going to be going over how to do the Easter egg because that could be another 30-minute video within itself. 
So I'm just going to cut to when I actually ended up getting the Rat King's heart. So this isn't the Rat King's heart, but what you can see me doing is throwing C4 at the ground here. What this C4 does is, like I said in, I think it was Spaceland, by standing on that spawn, it cancels it out. It does the same thing, but with C4. And if you down yourself, if you down yourself while there's C4 on the ground, if you double tap F or you click your grenade button, the C4s won't blow up and they will stay there permanently. So that way I can actually just switch out the C4 for the Rat King Heart and I can still cancel spawns. And why I'm canceling these spawns is because I'm taking the spawns that are furthest away and this is just going to speed up the rounds a little bit. It's not really overly necessary, but it's just something I did because I ended up getting C4. So here you can see I'm going to down myself. I come back, grab all my perks, grab quick revive again, and that's all I need. And now I'm basically set up. I just have to kill the Rat King one more time and I get his heart. So here I spawn in the Rat King and this is why you have the type 2 Butcher. This is only Pack-a-Punched once on round 20 and it's absolutely melting him on his final phase. And there you go. I have the Rat King's heart. And uh, so basically it's... I don't really know how to overly explain it. It basically just kills anything in sight. And what I'm using here is the UDM Stalker variant. This variant basically just gives you aimbot. So you can just be aiming and as long as your crosshairs are red, it'll headshot the zombies. Unless you're aiming down in which it'll actually just body shot them. But I am i don't have to aim in. I don't have to do anything. It's just locking onto their heads. And this is what I use for the first... This is what I use for the first 40 rounds or so. And here I get a double upgrade. So there you go. And this is why I'm able to use it till about 40. But this is where you can sit. This is one area. Uh, I think I ended up actually sitting here from like 30 to 40. I think this is the rounds that I did it. And the other couple rounds I actually just spent down in the double tap area because it's a little bit faster. And again, there's not really much to it. I just stand in a corner and I shoot my UDM. My UDM runs low. I pull up the type two and I use that. I don't actually buy the sword until about 40. I think that's actually when I ended up buying it. You don't really overly need it until then. So I lied. I was skimming through the gameplay and I think I might've just had my games messed up here. I buy it, but it ends. I end up actually trading this out because it's my meal kick weapon and you don't want it as your meal kick weapon. You so and the other gun I'm going to end up getting is the Titan. Because the Titan, when it's double upgraded, you actually get a boosted walking speed. And why this is so good is because of the ninja zombies, however fast you move, they're going to teleport more. So if I'm walking, they're not going to teleport that often, if at all. And if I'm sprinting, they're going to teleport a shit ton. And what this does is this will down you very easily. But here I'm done upgrading it, so I'm going to head back to the map. And what's cool about the double upgrade is you create a fucking wolf. So as you see, I just shot it, I go back in, I look towards the sign, and you shoot a wolf that kills literally anything in sight. And the cool thing about this sword is that it actually uses ammo clips for its, because it has ammo. Uh, yeah, yep. <laughs> Sorry, I kind of <laughs> kind of had a stroke there. But basically what it does, it uses ammo, so you can actually pick up the ammo clips on the ground, which is very helpful because you're just going to be able to kill more zombies than what you would normally be able to by just swinging it. So I actually did have my games messed up. I actually camped here until about 40, and once round, you see I used the Rat King's heart there. It literally explodes them from the inside with a bunch of rats. It's kind of disgusting now that I think about it. I end up camping here till about 40, and that's when I make my way to the roof. But before we go to the roof, I'm going to show the clown rounds. I would come down into the sewer, not the sewer, the train station, subway station, Jesus Christ. But I would stay here and I would just kind of sit on the second level, not going all the way down. And then I would just camp at the stairs and then I would come back to the stairs going up and I would just shoot at these two areas. You're going to kill zombies pretty quick if you do this. But going under the roof, this strategy is super easy. Uh, literally, all you do is if you have ammo in your sword... You're going to shoot towards wherever the major spawn is. So normally that's going to be down to the left by the car where the ripper is. And if you get zombies spawning on either side of you, actually on the roof, you're going to use your rat king heart. This will kill them. And basically you're just going to slash at them as they come up this uh, up the balcony. And because you're, they're coming up the balcony, if there's a group of zombies there, 
what this does is the sword actually kills them all. It's going to do more damage depending on how many zombies are climbing up. So here it's just two zombies, so it just kills two. But if there's only one zombie, it's going to take a couple hits to actually kill them. Basically, all this strategy is is just timing of when you want to kill the zombies. Here on 65 and 66, the area effect of the sword, if you time it right, will actually be infinite. And this is what's going to area your game is because it's trying to do so much to the zombies, but there's no zombies to do it. And this is actually why your game will crash. But once you do have this infinite effect, you can literally just sit here for five rounds and you don't have to do anything. You could literally leave your room and you would be fine most likely. But then once 70 hits, you're going to have to get your fat ass down to the sewer. And this is where we're going to be training for the next 30 rounds. So I'm actually going to have this like area effect of the sword on for a little bit. But once you kind of just let it run for a bit, if you don't have your sword out, it's not going to kill any zombies. But this is why we got the Rat King heart. Basically, and this is also why we got the Titan. I, I kind of forgot to mention that. I think I mentioned it earlier, but like the Titan, the walking speed difference is absurd. But basically, the entire strategy of this is you're going to walk around with your Titan out. And then if your trap's ready, you're going to hit the trap. But once the trap runs out, you're going to have to walk around with your Titan again. And then once your Rat King heart is ready, you use the Rat King heart. You walk around for a little bit. You shoot your sword down one of the tunnels. So either one of the two tunnels in front of me that come into the sewer. And then once you do that... You walk around for a bit, your Rat King heart will be ready, you use that, and then it's a rinse and repeat. Please, for the love of God, if you attempt this, do not sprint in this lair. This will kill you if you do it. I mean, you could probably get away with it sometimes, but I would highly advise against sprinting. The ninja zombies, you might not see them, but they fucking see you, and they will come after you. It's, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. They will find you. And basically, that's really the only thing that can kill you besides the god-awful collision in this game. See, I sprint there and a ninja zombie instantly teleported to in front of me. But what I was saying about the collision, the collision is something you've got to be really wary of. If they drop down from any of the walkways ahead on top of you, they drop down even to the left of you and you're not even touching them. They will throw you back. They'll throw you forward. They'll throw you through the sky, through the ground. It doesn't matter. They'll find a way to chuck you across the map. But here I'm on round 99. I'm finally getting close to the end of it. And thank God I never have to touch this map again because this map literally made me quit zombies for a month. But this is also something I forgot to talk about, sword trades. Now, this is also something that's going to get you killed. See, ninja zombies teleported to me. It flung me up the stairs. Here, I go to buy the UDM. It doesn't buy. I buy the UDM. And then I realize, oh shit, I don't have a meal kick weapon. And then I get trapped in here. Somehow make it out because I'm David fucking Blaine. Uh, <laughs> and then I have to run. I have to get a wall weapon, which is in here. But I'm going to use the trap first. And this trap basically saved my life. If this trap wasn't here, I'm dead in this game. Probably I would have had to do another game. But there I buy, what did I buy? The Reaver? I bought the Reaver. I run back. I buy the sword. I switch to my Titan eventually so I can run just a little bit faster. And then I'm going to head through the teleporter. And then I'm going to head up the train station and out into where I was camping before. You're going to go into the pack-a-punch room. I'm going to pack-a-punch my sword once because you only want to pack-a-punch it once because it gives you 20 shots in it. So if you do, you technically get 40 shots. One, you get 20 non-upgraded or upgraded once, you get 20. And then with the double upgraded, you get another 20. So this is just how to use more ammo. But I also traded out my UDM. So that way I only have two weapons and I don't mess up weapon swapping down in the sewer. I almost go down there again. And again, this is probably the most annoying part of doing this strategy. Here I used the fan trap and the fan trap actually ended off most of the round. I just had to kill a couple more zombies that were in the tunnels. And there you go. I killed the last zombie. I'm freaking out. I'm finally happy I can move on with and do a different map because this map gave me so much trouble please for your mental sake do not attempt this map but now we actually have to go to attack of the radioactive thing the second most boring map of all time <laughs> 
Now, when I say that this map is boring, I mean it. It is, uh, like, if I wasn't using Director's Cut, it would have been about seven hours of sitting in one spot, clicking two buttons. It is not a fun time. Straight up, not a fun time. But in reality, the setup for this map isn't horrible. All you're going to need is the three buildables on the map built. You're going to need to put gasoline in the pool trap. And you're also going to need Pack-A-Punch open so you can get the UDM double upgraded. And then that's really all there is to it. And then you're going to need C4 to block out the spawns so no zombies spawn behind you. But other than that, that's all you need. But here I open up towards the power station. I'm going to open this door. I'm going to grab the Violet Ray or the Vi Violet Ray Blueprint. It's kind of hard to say. I'm going to grab that. I'm going to take it over into this room. I'm going to put it on the table. I should have grabbed one of the parts while I was there because I could have done that faster. But, you know, who really cares at the end of the day? I'm going to go over here to this shopping cart. I'm going to grab one of the other pieces to it. I'm going to put it on the Blueprint. I'm going to go back. I mean, I'm going to grab the other two pieces and finish that up. So here I attach the last part to it. I'm going to grab the, I don't, the seismic wave generator, which is actually what you use to start the Easter egg and to actually do one of the Easter egg steps to get the arm. But instead, what I'm going to use this is as a backup for if I don't some, because like, Essentially, with the Violet Ray device, it only lasts, I think, a total of 45 seconds. I could be wrong, but if you put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up, put it down, pick it up. Basically, if you just keep repeating that, it extends the timer. Again, I haven't done too much research on this. This is like my second time, honestly, doing this. And it wasn't overly that difficult to do, but the... Sometimes it doesn't go as planned and you will use your, you will lose your ray device very, way quicker than what you think you would actually have it for. So in that case, you would want to build the seismic wave generator and the mind control device. That way you have those two traps along with the trap at Elvira's TV station and you have the pool trap. But here, I'm going to open down to the power handle, which is down on the beach. And then I'm going to head back to power, and I'm going to turn that on. Once power is on, you can actually bridge connections to four different teleporter pads around the map. And what this does is, obviously, I mean, you can just teleport around the map. It's actually probably the best feature of this map. But here, I open through Elvira's TV station, and then I go ahead and grab the fuel can, put it into the uh, gasoline tank. And then that allows me to use the pool trap in the future. But here I'm actually just hitting the box because one other thing I forgot to mention in the setup is you need the MAD. The MAD is what actually allows you to kill the Krogs. So the MAD can be upgraded by smacking a crowbar against three different uh, electrical panels around the map. You don't overly need to upgrade it. Uh, it works fine just as it is like non-upgraded because it'll always one-shot the Krogs, but it doesn't overly matter if you upgrade it or don't upgrade it. That's just personally up to you. But while I was running around that side of the map, I hit the teleporter pad by double tap, which is right outside Elvira's TV station, and I also hit the teleporter pad, which is right next to the RV park, and then this is the final teleporter pad right there. Since it's the final one, I can finally teleport, and then this one's going to throw you by the power station if you take that one on top of the power station that will throw you at double tap double tap will throw you at the rv and the rv will throw you out at juggernaut here i grab elvira's spell book because i forgot to grab that when i originally turned power on but what you need this spell book for is this is how you get to pack a punch and pack a punch is very very good for setting up in this strategy especially for the early rounds but here you can see I'm going to teleport and it's going to take me right outside Elvira's TV station. I'm going to give the vial to her. Actually, I give the spell book to her, which then takes a little bit. She's going to say a little bit of dialogue. And then once that dialogue's over, uh, a vial will pop up in your inventory. And what this vial does, you just keep meleeing zombies with a knife you took out of a shark. 
yep, that just came out of my mouth. But you're going to use this uh, machete that you took out of the shark and you're going to use your, your melee. Melee some zombies is going to fill up the vial. And here I pick up the mind control blueprint. And before I was able to place it down, I summoned Elvira. So I had to go over to one of the pack-a-punch locations. She stands in it, but she doesn't activate it because she's fucking stupid. And I have to move across the map. I move away for a couple meters. And then, yeah, she just starts doing her little go-go gadget magic shit. And then I'm able to teleport to the pack-a-punch room. And I end up, I think I double upgrade my UDM here. I end up double upgrading my UDM. And then I also upgrade my... UMP 45, but I don't take it because I only need two weapons for this strategy. But here I finally add the blueprint down and then I end up grabbing the three parts to actually build the mind control device. And once this is built, I am literally already set up. I have my double packed UDM, I have the MAD upgraded, and I have all three of my buildables built. The next thing I need is C4, and you will not guess how long this took me to get it took me till round 40 40 to get one c4 drop just, just let that sink in <laughs> round round 40 to get one c4 so what this meant is i couldn't even do the low round strat because i did not get c4 until 40 and the low round strat you can relatively do up to 45 anything and then realistically the highest I think you can go is 50 with it but that's only if you are pretty good at the game I am not <laughs> I am not that good at the game if you want to watch someone good at the game go watch Rasmo or Scrine or Zay they are good at the game me I'm just a dumbass running around on zombies but here is the strategy I had to use until round 40 I sat next to Slappy Taffy in this corner and just went a ham with the UDM. And I did this till round 40. I couldn't eat, I'm just, it just aggravated. How do I not get one C4 until round 40? I don't understand. The best part of all this, I don't have a recording of me throwing the C4. I don't, did. <laughs> I hate this map. <laughs> But basically, what you do for this strategy is in the spawn room, there are four spawns that the zombies come from. So basically, you just throw four C4s at those spawns. You die out. And once you die out, you can't set them off like I explained in uh, Shaolin Shuffle. So once you do that, you can just spam your interact button and you don't have to worry about blowing up your C4. And this strategy is a thousand times easier on controller and it does not hurt your fingers as much my hands were fucking killing me during this because it's just spamming two buttons basically as fast as you can so you don't like keep the timer going of the uh the ray device and here i'm about i think it's about to come up is the most annoying part of the strategy is when you don't see crogs and you have to try to kill them and their little goo just spills everywhere on the map. And also for some reason in this game, when I would end the round, there would still be zombies left over and I have no idea why or how that happens. There'd use, I would end the round and then there'd be like one more zombie. I think that's just a bug for this map though. And like I said, the most annoying part of this strategy is actually just gonna be the crogs and dealing with them. If you can deal with the crogs, this strategy is just brain numbingly easy. Like here, I get kind of pinned so I have to run back. I spam place the ray device by mistake. And then it's, I basically am kind of screwed here. It's like a slow kind of take back of the area by just picking it up and placing. That's basically what I did if I ever lost, uh, like sometimes it wouldn't even work. Zombies would just walk through. So you basically just got to be really careful with it. And sometimes zombies would spawn from behind you. And there, the it actually just blew up. But the thing is, with the ray device, is like I said, I think I said this, but the ray device is round-based. So if you pick it up on round, uh, let's say you pick it up round three, you would have to wait until round four and a half to pick it back up. It's usually a ha round and a half to two rounds before you can finally pick it back up. But the cool thing is, is it's from when you pick it up. So if I pick it up on round three, but I keep spamming it down on the ground, which keeps canceling the timer, 
I can realistically make it last for hours, but I would still have a Ray device ready to go once that one breaks because it sh I've had it for more than a round and a half. But luckily, I did not need to actually change the strategy at all from 43 to 100. I didn't have to use any traps, luckily, because I was able to save it. But now we have to move on to a arguably more annoying map, Beast from Beyond. And I'm sorry I did not talk about this map a lot uh, for attack, but I'm recording this right after I actually did the 100. And my brain is just completely fried. I don't want to talk about this map. This was insanely boring. Let's just move on. Before we get into the strategy, the first thing you're going to need is a Karma 45. So go into your custom classes or whatever, you know, get it, that all set up. And then the other requirement is the Venom X, which you can get from the box. And then the other thing is you cannot turn on power for this strategy. Otherwise, it will turn into a 13-hour strategy. We cannot talk about brain-numbing maps without having Beast from Beyond in this conversation. This is the only map that I had to use fortune cards on, as I'm showing right there. This is because I did the no power strat for this. Fuck the power strat. I'm not running in a circle for 13 hours. You have me fucked up. But the uh, strat for this is really simple. You use Get Packed and the Wall Power card. Uh, but you need to hit the box for the Venom X, which if you have Director's Cut on it, it'll just upgrade it to the Venom Z, I believe it's called. You don't need the actual Fate and Fortune card, but if you're not using Director's Cut, you're going to need to use that. But you need that, and then you need to Wall Buy with the pack a punch uh, card on you need a wall by the karma 45 and this is because it is a wall by right next to where we're camping and when it's pack a punched it melts the cryptids very fast including the blue cryptid that spawns because that all these cryptids they really stop gaining health around round 30 so they're very very easy to take but here i found where the box was it was in the cargo hold i activate packed magic which again it's like crate power from bo3 but I just end off the round here pretty quick. But I'm going to wall buy the Exion because I accidentally bought the Karma thinking I had the wall power one on. I didn't. But I just end up hitting the box here until I get the Venom X, which I get here. You don't need the Get Packed card. I was just stupid and I thought you did. But it automatically is upgraded with Director's Cut on. Next, I just need to grab the Karma 45 which I do here. This is where we're camping. It's on the wall right here. You grab it. It's pack-a-punched. And this is actually where we're going to be camping for the entirety rest of the game. So when you... Ca I couldn't figure this out at first because this is my first time actually playing the map. But with the, with the uh, Venom X, if you shoot and you click your right mouse, it'll explode. You don't actually have to wait for it to explode. I'm just an idiot, all right? But... Uh, what these cryptids do is when you kill the cryptids, they actually drop ammo for you. Essentially, you have infinite ammo because on how easy these cryptids are to kill. This strategy took around, I think, four and a half hours total. Like, it's very mind-numbing. It's just, it's so boring. There's nothing enjoyable about it. And it's just, it's just not overly that fun. I'm not going to lie. I don't have that much to talk about. Like, the rounds were taking less than th two and a half minutes. The rounds were two minutes. So this is round 98. And, I mean, it's just... It's so... Just... It's so easy. The only thing you have to worry about is... And yes, I know my player icon changed. The other game that I was showing... My dumbass went too far back into the room. I tried grabbing the Venom X ammo... But as you can see here, it is the most buggy thing on the planet. And I ended up opening the door. So I had to restart. But it's not that bad of a restart because the Venom X is actually pretty common. But, I mean, it I was on like round 20. So it's like kind of just whatever. But here, I mean, I just run down. I shoot. And then I hit right click so it explodes. I have a, you know, sometimes you get the cryptids that spawn up top. 
you just walk them into the Venom X gas. And then basically you have to hope that you get ammo drops. And you have to actually hope that you get ammo drops that you can actually pick up. And uh, what I'm doing here is I'm shooting and then before I'm able to reload, I actually pick up a Venom pouch. And what this does, this cancels out the reload and gives me two extra shots. Because if you are at zero ammo in total, uh, when you pick up a pouch, it'll set your ammo to one in your clip, one in your reserve. And it works the same exact way if you have just shot. So let's say I have one one Venom X shot in my clip and I have seven in my reserve. If I shoot the Venom X and then I pick up a pouch right after I shoot it, it'll put it to one in my clip and eight in my reserve. Basically, you have infinite ammo, like I said. I have two ammo things on. I didn't need to use any of them for this game. It was, I mean, it's just dumb. Like, I mean, here I didn't do it because it doesn't matter at that point because I'm going to still end up with the same amount because I'm at zero out of one and I'm at zero out of two. So there, I didn't do it. But 90% of this game I did. And I'm sorry. Again, I'm sorry for these last two maps for not really having much to talk about. But it there's nothing to talk about. You just you sit in a corner and you do your thing. On attack, you just spam two buttons, and then if it breaks, you run around the map for a bit until you and a round or two. On this, you can just you can kill zombies infinitely because you don't turn the power on. You can kill them infinitely with the karma. Like, it's just... <laughs> it's it's so stupid with how easy this strategy is. Again, I'm sorry. I don't have much to talk about. But that's going to do it for the final map of Beast from Beyond, round 100. And that's actually going to do it for the video. And I hope you guys did enjoy this. This was a hell of a long video. And this was the first time I've ever done a project like this. Again... Shout out to Samuel the 17th. He's the one who inspired me to do this. But if you did enjoy this, please let me know. This was a lot of work, but also a ton of fun to do. So I'm very down to make another one. You know, whether that's BO4, BO3, you know, whatever game, I'm down to make it. I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.